What is it? Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another weekly meal prep where we are getting things together for the week and this just makes my life so much easier. So starting out, we are going to prepare Monday's meal, which is going to be creamy spinach, turkey, meatballs, rice, and green beans. And my favorite way to make really good rice that my family absolutely loves is I take some of my home canned peppers and onions and I drain them off and I actually keep the broth that they make I will leave the video linked below where I canned those peppers and onions in case you want to try it out or you hit a really good sale on bell peppers. But I drain that off and then I add some water just to make sure I have enough liquid for my rice. I add a little salt and pepper and this makes some of the best cooked rice ever. The flavor is absolutely scrumptious. Next, we're going to prepare the turkey meatballs. I actually took this recipe and doubled it, and I think it also called for ground chicken instead of ground turkey or partially ground chicken. So I'm using fully ground turkey. I didn't want the other half of the meat to go to waste. And I am adding in all of the other ingredients. It has some shredded mozzarella, some spices, this recipe was really, really delicious. My family completely raved about it and I definitely want to make it again. It also has some chopped cilantro in it, which makes everything extra delicious. And whenever I'm going to make meatballs, the rings always come off. I know a lot of people like to bake their meatballs. I personally like to make mine in the frying pan. It just gets that nice crispiness on the outside of the meatball and I prefer that texture. Once you've fried up the meatballs, you're going to remove them from the pan so that you can make your creamy, delicious sauce. This recipe actually called for sun-dried tomatoes that are soaked in olive oil. I didn't have any of those, but I had regular sun-dried tomatoes. So earlier in the day, I had taken some boiling water and poured it over the sun-dried tomatoes, allowing them to kind of rehydrate and absorb the moisture, and it worked perfectly. Then I just added them right in to the place where the other type of sun-dried tomato was required in the recipe. Since this does live up to its name and it's very creamy, it called for cream and some Parmesan cheese. And if you guys watch my channel often, you know how much we adore Parmesan cheese in our house. So obviously this recipe was a huge hit. And then I also cooked up a jar of my home canned green beans to go along with this meal as well. So Tuesday we are going to do a corn chowder along with chicken quesadillas. So you all saw the onions and peppers that I drained off to make the rice. Well, I'll be using those onions and peppers to make our chicken quesadillas so they're not going to waste. And that's kind of the nice thing about doing your own meal prepping and planning is you can find ways to use up all of your ingredients that you're using and um, not let anything go to waste. So I love any chowders. I think that they're absolutely delicious. And this one's really, really simple. I just grabbed two bags of some organic corn from Aldi. I don't know, I think they were like maybe $2 a bag. Very inexpensive. And you want to put them in a pot with some oil in the bottom to start kind of roasting the corn. Now my grocery store was actually out of red bell peppers, which is what this recipe calls for. So I grabbed a bag of these mini bell peppers just so I didn't have to make a stop at another store. I pulled out all the red ones, diced them up, and then the rest of them we will use in omelets or other things throughout the week.
I'm just cutting up some cilantro that goes in this soup as well. And once the corn starts to get little brown bits on it, it wasn't showing up very well on camera, but I tried to show you that some of the pieces of corn were getting darker. And you can honestly allow these to get as blackened as you want if you would rather have a very roasted corn flavor. But once they're there, you wanna pull out about a cup of the corn kernels. And then I'm using a pint of my homemade chicken broth, which by the way, I'm going to be filming a broth video soon on how to make home canned chicken broth and beef broth. It's so incredibly healthy for you and it's very simple to do. And I know a lot of you have wondered about that and so I'll be sharing that really soon. So once you've cooked up some of the corn in the broth, you're going to put it into a blender or you could use an immersion blender as well. And then you're gonna blend it all up to give it a good creamy consistency. You're gonna actually add cream in and then I'm adding my peppers and onions in there as well. And I'm gonna let all of that simmer just to cook those veggies up and it let all of the flavors really combine. This is optional, and if you have little ones that don't like spicy food, you may wanna swap this out for a different cheese, but the cheese that you are putting in this soup is going to be a pepper jack, and it just brings out fantastic flavor. This paired so well with chicken quesadillas, and it definitely works great as a winter soup. Over the last six months or so, I've been getting a lot of questions about my cookware and whether I like it or what cookware I would suggest. So I wanted to tell you all that I have been using Caraway cookware for, oh, I don't know, about a year and I love it. It is truly some of the best, if not the best cookware that I've ever used. I actually had a friend of mine ask me about it not long ago, wondering if it was worth it. And I immediately told her, absolutely, I would recommend it to anyone. Caraway's cookware is 100% nonstick ceramic cookware. So you get cookware sets and it comes with organizers at no extra cost. The beautiful colors complement any home and any kitchen and style. This is an amazing investment in your kitchen and your health with ceramic cookware. If you use the link in the description box, you will get 10% off site-wide in your cart and I can't recommend this enough. Everyone in our household loves using it. It would even make a wonderful wedding gift or new home gift. On Wednesday, we're gonna make a chicken broccoli cauliflower rice casserole. Yes, that is quite the mouthful, huh? So I had pulled out some canned chicken um, for something else this week and I decided to go ahead and use the rest of it up to make this casserole. So I cooked up the broccoli or steamed it in the bag in the microwave first just to make sure that it wasn't too tough. I wanted to make sure that broccoli really got cooked well since everything else was going to cook or bake up really quickly. And then I decided to use a cheddar cheese with this. I will write the recipe for this in the description box below because I'm gonna be honest, this is one I just kind of pulled together because I wanted to use up some of the things I had around. I've had um, some bags of broccoli in the freezer that needed to use up, as well as bags of riced cauliflower, and obviously this jar of chicken. And the block of cheddar cheese honestly had been in the fridge for a while, so that needed to be used up as well. So it was a great way to use up a lot of ingredients I had around before they go to waste, and I want to teach more on that as I am sharing these videos with you all, and that is to be using up the things that we have around. That way we don't waste anything, and in the end, it helps our pocketbooks, helps us stay in budget, and it is just good for everyone all around. So I just put the lid on this and put it into the refrigerator, and then I'm going to be baking it up the night that we eat it. Thursday is my home canned chili, cucumber salad, and cornbread. And I don't think I've ever shared how I make my home canned chili. That's another video that I will be doing sometime soon because I'm actually running low on that in my cellar. 
Also, I'm going to be sharing a tour soon of my cellar. It's almost ready to be toured and for me to film that video, so I'm really excited about that. So I am preparing some cornbread that doesn't have any corn in it. And you all know that I like to share a lot of recipes that are great for gluten friendly, dairy free friendly. We have a few sensitivities in our house, so I am a little bit conscious of those things. So this recipe is actually made with almond flour, but the texture you almost would not know that it's not real cornbread. It's got a very similar texture to real cornbread. And here's a great example of how I use my two gallon buckets in my pantry and why I do that big bag of almond flour is from Costco and I like to just be able to refill whenever I am out of it. And I also used a monk fruit blend um, sweetener so this does not have actual sugar in it just as another swap out so that we're not getting so much sugar so while the cornbread was in the oven i decided to go ahead and prep up the cucumber salad you made a sandcastle with things you find yeah there's a front porch Ooh, that's cool Do you want a cucumber? Yeah. You can have one. Or a couple. You can just grab a handful. Thank you, Mommy. You're welcome. They're really good. One thing that I wanted to use was some dill. And again, earlier in the day, whenever I had gotten the red pepper soaking, I also got some dill soaking in some boiling water that I poured over it. It just helps to rehydrate the herb and really helps to pull out the flavor. This salad was so delicious and you could even add a little sugar or a little stevia to sweeten it up. I actually ended up adding a little bit of stevia just to sweeten it up a bit and the girls could not stay out of it. It was so good. Now the cornbread was out of the oven and you really want to make sure that it is baked thoroughly through depending on the pan that you bake it in. Friday I'm going to do one of our absolutely favorite sheet pan meals. Um, this is the ham and pineapple one. And again, I always like to mention, I'll leave that oil dispenser link in the description box below. In fact, I actually updated all of my links and I linked almost everything in my kitchen. It's all alphabetically organized in the description box. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. If you've been looking for something that I've been showing on my videos a lot, you may be able to find it there. I don't think I missed a whole lot. I think pretty much everything in my kitchen cupboards is listed down there. And a few things even have some discount codes. So I went ahead and took a couple red potatoes, sliced them up, and I didn't slice them too thin. You know, you wanna have a little bit of chunkiness there to be able to pick it up with your fork. And then I took a pineapple that I had been ripening on the counter um, and sliced that up as well, about the same thickness or so as the ham was sliced. I took a ham steak, cut that into several different pieces, and I just gotta say, this sunlight that we've been getting the last week or so here in central Pennsylvania has been like medicine to my soul. It has been so sh sun shiny <laughs> and just beautiful. So beautiful. It makes me so excited for warmer months to come. And of course, all the food preservation that comes with that. I have so much I'm so excited to share with you all. We decided not to do a garden this year, so I'm going to be purchasing all of my fruits and veggies to preserve from local farmers, which I'm excited about. And um, so look forward to sharing all of that with you. I love just putting this pan together. It's so, so simple. 
So once you've layered the pineapple between the, the ham and you have your potatoes laying out, you can drizzle them with some olive oil and then sprinkle them with whatever seasoning you like. I just did some salt, pepper, and chives. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I hope that you stick around. Um, and I hope that you find a lot of inspiration from my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.